one of the most confusing topics for patients, their loved ones, and for clinicians um, is what's the difference between Lewy body dementia and Parkinson's disease? And there are other videos on my website that help to explain some of these things, but I wanted to try and uh, capture it for you. So we have a problem um, in the Lewy body dementia versus Parkinson's space. We have several, in fact. Number one, we don't have a test that allows you to say, oh, this is this and this is that. Number two, um, when you ask the scientists who do the research looking at the brain of patients who've had Parkinson's disease and patients who've had Lewy body dementia, there are more similarities than differences. So I think that's important. But it's important to bear in mind that the people with Parkinson's who have got to that point where their brain has been donated generally have had a much longer disease course than the people with Lewy body dementia. Lewy body dementia, much more aggressive combination of physical and memory problems which we'll discuss. So essentially we've got these sorts of problems and then on top of that what we've got is two societies, the International Parkinson and Movement Disorder Society and the International, International Consortium on Lewy Body Dementia. And these different societies um, have each come up with diagnostic criteria for their disease of interest. Now the International Lewy Body Society, I think, is actually probably much more useful and pragmatic for patients and also for doctors. Um, and what they um, urge for their diagnosis is that somebody to be diagnosed with Lewy Body Dementia, they must have dementia, and that's essentially cognitive decline that is rapid, usually within 12 months, sufficient enough to impact on their occupational, societal quality of life. Effectively, the next tier um, that the Lewy Body Consortium put on the diagnosis of Lewy Body Dementia is you have to have two out of four core symptoms. And those core symptoms are Parkinsonism, so slowness or stiffness or shake, visual hallucinations, which are usually well-formed and repetitive, so seeing people, seeing animals that aren't there. And thirdly, fluctuations in cognition, and this can be difficult to tease apart, but often best described as people zoning out, so you're talking to your loved one and they, they're just not really responding, or have periods when they seem quite lucid and very sharp, compared to periods where they're quite confused and maybe even a bit delirious. And you almost get the feeling, well, hang on, you were great this morning or this afternoon, and now you're like this, it doesn't make any sense. Um, and then the fourth core feature is dream enactment, so REM sleep behavior disorder. So the truth is uh, that we've got this scenario with the Lewy Body Dis uh, Disorders Consortium saying, must have the dementia, and then two out of those four would make the diagnosis of Lewy Body Dementia far more likely. The International Parkinson and Movement Disorder Society have gone a little bit differently and what they've said is, look, if you have the clinical features of Parkinson's disease and there are, again, a set of diagnostic criteria for those and my team have been involved in helping to validate those criteria, um, if you've got those, it doesn't matter if you've got dementia as well. They would call that Parkinson's disease. They might go as far as to call it the Lewy body variant of Parkinson's, or Lewy body dementia variant of Parkinson's disease. So this isn't terribly helpful because what we've got is two bodies, one saying, well look, we think these cases, if they dement within the first 12 months, that's Lewy body dementia, and the other group saying, well, look, everything's Parkinson's. I don't think it's helpful to think everything's Parkinson's because in actual fact, we know that the prognosis is different between the two. We know that um, in Lewy body dementia, the, the dementia is there up front and personal um, in the first 12 months, and the, the decline is much more rapid. Parkinson's disease, we do know that people go on to get dementia at higher rates. People bandy around a figure like 8 out of 10 patients after 20 years of disease. A meaningless figure really out of context, but as a group, makes sense, but if you're 50 and you get diagnosed with Parkinson's, I think your chances of being demented in the next 20 years is pretty small, for example. 
Um, so we have these divides, and as I say, I think it's important to know um, that there are differences because what happens with a lot of clinicians is that when people get dementia in their Parkinson's, they'll say, oh, it's now Lewy body dementia, and that probably, A, isn't true, because it's been Parkinson's and they've gone on to dement, and B, it isn't helpful, because in actual fact, you're going to treat them the same way. Anyway, what happens is that people end up getting confused and thinking, well, I thought my husband all these years had had Parkinson's, and now you're telling me about Lewy body dementia. The straight answer is, most people who've had Parkinson's for a long time, and that long time can be in the context of how old they are. If you're 80 and you've had five years of Parkinson's and then you dement, that's a long time. If you're 50 and you dement within two years, the bottom line is that's not good and that would sound much more aggressive and not Parkinson's-like. The challenges of Lewy body dementia and advanced Parkinson's are extremely similar because all of those features I mentioned, the core features for Lewy body dementia, we also see in patients with Parkinson's disease dementia. So on a practical level, when we've got patients with advanced Parkinson's or Lewy body dementia, we're managing them in very similar ways. So please don't think, oh my goodness, I need to know, is it the Lewy body or is this Parkinson's? Because in actual fact, most of the approaches we use are very similar. The hope, of course, of keeping them separate is that we might develop better treatment strategies for each. My hope, in some ways, is that if they found a drug for Parkinson's that slowed it down, it should work even better for Lewy body dementia, based on the chemotherapies for cancers tend to work better for those cancers that are more aggressive. Well, Lewy body dementia is, if you like, having Parkinson's disease on speed. So I think it is important for us to keep that distinction, but I don't think it should vex uh, the general population out there, as I say. So hopefully that's helped to clarify some of these distinctions that uh, are a little bit blurred at the edges between Lewy body dementia and Parkinson's disease. Thank you.